Peru is moving to a new institutional crisis after President Nina Boluarte's residence was searched. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, assures that they could be forced to withdraw step by step from the battlefront. And in the middle of the most brutal genocide in modern history, the 48th anniversary of Palestinian Land Day is celebrated. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Peru is moving to a new institutional crisis after President Dina Boluarte's residence was searched. Premier Gustavo Adriansen called for an emergency meeting of the Council of Ministers. The procedure ordered by the prosecutor's office in the House of the President in the district of Surquillo was completed in a, the last few hours. As we have reported in our news day, it corresponds to an investigation for her purchase of luxury watches and jewels. The Prime Minister confirmed that the President is at the Government Palace, where a commission of the Public Prosecutor's Office arrived shortly before. In view of this serious situation, Congressman Carlos Anderson did not rule out the possibility of removing the President from office. The Bolivian government sent a greeting message to Venezuela over the July presidential elections. In an official communique issued on Saturday, La Paz convened its Latin American and revolutionary greetings to the Bolivarian government of Venezuela, its people and its president, Nicolás Maduro. The note also expressed the Bolivian government's concern over the threats and actions by some far-right organizations to uh, destabilize the Venezuelan polls and its political system. On the other hand, it urges Washington to respect Venezuela's self-determination and independence and to refrain from any interference in its internal issues. In this context, Venezuela's foreign minister, Ivan Hill, thanked the government of Bolivia for its greeting to the atmosphere in the Bolivarian nation ahead of the presidential elections of next July 28th, its concern due to the threats and actions by the extreme right wing, and its demand for the U.S. to respect Venezuela's self-determination. In Uruguay, the number of dengue fever rises to over 200 cases after the return of tourists into the country. The Ministry of Public Health reported that studies have revealed 224 cases, of which 113 are autochthonous and 111 imported, including cases of chikungunya and two of Zika. He also explained that Argentina, Brazil and Paraguay are the countries importing dengue fever in 95% of all patients. A disease called health authorities warn about the probability that some people are suffering from the disease and do not have a positive laboratory result as 75% of the cases are asymptomatic. The government of Honduras announced that it will subsidize the increasing electricity rates starting in the second quarter of 2024 as part of the initiatives implemented by the state to support the population. The Regulatory Commission of Electric Energy stated that the entity is forced to make trimesterly adjustments to the base cost of generation and the tariffs of distribution companies. In this sense, the government approved the adjustment the base cost of generation for a value of $153.78 effective for the second quarter that begins on April 1st and ends on the end of June. In percentage terms, this means a slight increase of 3.45%, which will not be reflected in the bills thanks to the subsidy from the executive headed by President Xiomara Castro. In Ecuador, the councilman of San Borondón, Julio Ronquillo, was found dead after his kidnapping last Thursday in Guayas. The death of the councilman was confirmed by leaders of the Citizen Revolution Party and by the prefecture. However, the police authorities have not yet pronounced themselves on the crime. 
It should be noted that Ronquillo is the second member of the political coalition to be murdered this month after the assassination of Major Brigitte Garcia last March 24th. Since last January 8th, the government of Daniel Novoa ordered a state of exception until next April 8th in order to face the security crisis that the country is going through. In Haiti, armed violence threatens child safety and education due to school closures in its capital, Port-au-Prince. According to data from the United Nations Organization, these clashes between criminal gangs have caused the forced displacement of some 360,000 citizens, half of whom are minors. Meanwhile, social organizations and Haiti's health ministry warned that the Caribbean island suffers the highest level of infant mortality in the Western Hemisphere, in large extent because of the violence prevailing in the country, which prevents proper medical care of children. It is known as well that gangs and criminal groups in Haiti have taken control of the main ports and roads in Port-au-Prince. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Teresur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates and more. All the stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. The president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, assures that they could be forced to withdraw step by step from the battlefront. This is what he stated on Friday during an interview with the American media Washington Post. The Ukrainian president assured that if there's no American support, it means that we will go back, we will withdraw step by step by ratifying that this is a war more from Washington than Kyiv, reiterating that without air defense, without Patriots missiles and electronic warf warfare and artillery inhibitors, they would not be able to continue on the battlefront. However, and despite the changes in equipment and strategies, Kyiv cannot convince the Republican Congress, who keep, for the moment, the tap closed. In Russia, the armed forces neutralized an attempt of terrorist attack and captured three foreign suspects from Central Asia. The Federal Security Service reported that the criminals planned to detonate a device in a public area of Stavropol region. During the investigations, homemade explosive device fragments and chemicals were found in the house of one of the three suspects. This comes within the context of the terrorist attack that took place a week ago at a, the Crocus concert hall outside Moscow, which claimed the lives of at least 144 people. In the middle of the most brutal genocide in modern history, the 44th, 48th anniversary of Palestinian Land Day is celebration, celebrated. The Commission of Resistance to the Wall and Settlements says that Israel has stolen more than 2,800 kilometers of territory. Moajed Shaban, head of the commission, also reported that the occupant has started establishing blocking zones around the colonies. This Palestinian organization has registered a total of 52 structural plants oriented to build 8,829 colonial units on an area equivalent to 6,852 acres. On one Earth Aid Earth Days, Palestine was surrounded by the murders of more than 32,000 people. The people of Yemen also mobilized in support of Palestinians in Sana'a, the capital city, and 14 other provinces across the nation. The demonstrators asserted 
that Palestine is a priority for the people of Yemen and therefore reject those who remain silent in the face of the genocide carried out by Israel against the citizens of Gaza. The Yemenis also warned the United States and the United Kingdom that any adventure against their territory will be strongly repelled by thousands of Muslim combatants. In Cuba, Palestinian Land Day is commemorated with several solidarity demonstrations and calls for a permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. A political and cultural event will be held this Sunday at the headquarters of the Cuban Institute of Friendship with the Peoples on the occasion of the aforementioned commemoration. This event takes place in support of the Palestinian cause in the middle of the tragic circumstances they are currently going through in light of the intensification of genocide, ethnic cleansing, forced displacement and a war of hunger that the world never witnessed before. Since October 7, 2023, the Israeli occupation has murdered over 32,000 Palestinians in the face of international rejection and in complicity with the United States. Cuba advocates for peace in the occupied territories based on the creation of two states that will allow the Palestinian people to be free from Tel Aviv's aggression. In Palestine, the health situation is worsening in the Gaza Strip. Shortage of, ba of basic supplies leads to increases in hepatitis cases and higher risk of infections. More details in the following report. The Palestinian population in Gaza is currently facing high sanitary risks due to the devastation caused by the ravages of the attacks and the destruction of most of its hospital centers, combined with the scarcity of basic supplies such as food, water, Fuel. The world misery is not enough, the world suffering is not enough, the world trade is not enough. This people has never fallen. It has always had its head held high from its beginnings, from its ancestors, its great great grandparents and grandparents and all its generation. We only bow down before our God. We only kneel in our place of prayer. Our suffering starts from childhood. My child suffers, my neighbor's child suffers, my partner's child in the tent suffers. Besides, the environmental situation is extremely deteriorated. Here, the children have intestinal infection every day. There are all kinds of diseases. Hepatitis has proliferated in an impressive way. There are 20,000 to 30,000 cases. At least 1.5 million citizens are refugees in the border town of Rafa, crammed into United Nations educational centers and improvised tents. I was displaced four months ago to Dehi, then from Dehi to Hanjinis, and then from Hanjinis to Rafa. That is to say that I am displaced several times. Life here is very, very hard for us. Later, the heat will come and may God help us. I call on all the Arab countries to support us and to stop this injustice that is being committed against us, because we are really tired of it. Our situation is too difficult. There is no food or medicine or anything. There are no basic elements to survive. Meanwhile, the International Court of Justice on Thursday ordered Israel to ensure without delay the delivery of urgent humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. According to the UN's highest court, Tel Aviv must take all necessary and effective measures to ensure the unimpeded provision of basic services and humanitarian aid. We have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break. Don't go away.
Welcome back. The government of Peru delivers a shipment of humanitarian aid to families affected by an avalanche caused by the heavy rains registered in the last days. The National Defense Institute reported that over 35 families were affected after the destruction of more than 30 houses in San Juan Bautista municipality following the heavy rains that triggered a creek and caused a landslide that affected several villages. While the emergency is still ongoing, the local municipality delivered humanitarian aid to the regional government to be distributed among those affected. Meanwhile, meteorological authorities issued warnings in view of forecasts indicating upcoming rainfall with moderate to heavy intensity levels in the central and southern highlands of the country. On Friday, the European Union decided to remove Israel from hosting the European Gymnastics Championship because of the situation in Gaza. The artistic gymnastic competition was to be held for the 11th time in Israel and was scheduled for May 13, 2025. In this sense, the organizer opened the application process for new candidacy, with, which will be available until April 23rd of this year. In addition to this suspension, the International Gymnastics Federation also cancelled the Rhythmic Gymnastics Challenge World Cup, as scheduled to be held next June in Jerusalem. We keep talking about sports because Japanese swimmer Rikako Aiki has qualified for Paris 2024 as a leukemia survivor. The 23-year-old swimmer was diagnosed in 2018 and was hospitalized for 10 months, returning to compete during 2020. However, she failed to qualify for the last edition of the Olympic Games in her home country. However, in Paris 2024, she will be part of the Japanese delegation after securing her quota in 100 meters butterfly style category with a time of 57.34 seconds in her competition. With four months to go before the Olympic Games, Apollo's fountain at the Palace of Versailles is back in use after two years of extensive restoration work. The Palace of Versailles is due to host the equestrian events at the Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games this summer. Restored main gate and Apollo test and training arenas, cross-country track and gigantic grandstands, the Chateau de Versailles is putting out all the stops to host the equestrian events of the Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games this summer. With 119 days to go before the Olympics, the main entrance gate to the Chateau, which was visited by 8 million tourists last year, is still partially clad in a glittering mantle covering the very end of its restoration project, as scheduled to mark the, pla the palace 400th anniversary in 2023. The work is called the Chariot of the Sun, although it is also known as the Fountain of Apollo. This main, its main protagonist, who emerges from the waters of the pond in his chariot drawn by four horses. Pathion also appears represented at the feet of the horses. It is one of the most important pieces of the 55 fountains that decorate the gardens of the Palace of Versailles. The Chariot of the Sun or Fountain of Apollo perfectly revealed the, the theatrical concept of these Baroque gardens and has become one of the most iconic images of the monumental ensemble of Versailles. Caracas takes to the stage with Venezuela's International Progressive Theater Festival, an event that unites culture with solidarity. Let's see the details with our correspondent, Gladys Casal. From March 22nd to March 31st, Caracas hosted the International Progressive Theater Festival of Venezuela. Among the main venues was San Agustin, one of the most popular areas of the Venezuelan capital. Its theater, La Alameda, lent its stage for a singular play for its spectators. The 
This is the Knights of Significance, a Barbadian play in two acts that recreates first the kidnapping of Africans, the dispossession of their culture, and then the rebellion of Buza, a historical passage of the anti-slavery deeds in the island. With a minimal scenography and live music, 12 actors interpret these events. In spite of the language which barriers for them, it is crucial to bring their message to the Venezuelan lands. We don't take many opportunities to explore the linkages between our history, and I think this play was a great opportunity for us to do just that, to, you know, tell the public that, hey, listen, we have been through the same thing. We both have characters, uh, individuals who would have fought for uh, the emancipation. Uh, either from colonial slave masters or from you know an imperialist system, uh, General Busa sought to do so for the enslaved in Barbados, uh, like Simon Bolivar from Venezuela, as he sought to uh, liberate uh, Venezuela from Spanish control. The play, although simple, contains codes of negritude and blackness shared by the Caribbean and Latin America. Those behind production know very well the value of every detail. Stitching together the play with, with the music of Africa fused with the music of Barbados, which is what was created through the slave society in Barbados, was very important to me. We have very, very, very um, similar history, but in different diasporas. And um, the, for, for Barbados and, and Venezuela to come together and build um, a tighter friendship, because that's what's needed within the Latin American country and the Caribbean. We need to be one and not just separate. So this is a step towards that. In spite of the language barriers, this performance achieved its goal to bring together two peoples with common struggles, and this was its message. Afterwards, it will go to Cuba to expand Caribbean brotherhood through the art. Gladys Casara, Telesur, Caracas, Venezuela. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.